everybody and welcome wherever you are in the world right now. We're so happy to have you here with us for this event today. My introductions are going to be very brief because each of our speakers will introduce the next speaker and because I want to really make the most of this one hour, actually now 55 minutes, uh, so you can enjoy the poetry that will be shared with you today by Coco Tet, who will be sharing two new poems, uh, Moshin Nguyen, who will be sharing poems from her new book, Storage Unit for the Spirit House. You can find gazillion reviews uh, all over the web. There seems to be one every day. And Chao Dai, who is a PhD candidate in the Department of South and Southeast Asian Studies here at Berkeley. I want to take a few moments, however, to first and foremost thank the Center for Southeast Asian Studies, which is our National Resource Center on campus, and especially to thank Sarah Maxim, the Vice Chair of the Center, for all the hard work she's been doing behind the scenes to make this happen, and the Chair, Nancy Pulisto, for her warm and inclusive leadership of the Center. As those of you in the US who are here today uh, will know, um, our National Resource Centers are funded by Title VI, and we thank Title VI programs for the funding for our Burmese language program here on campus. This event today commemorates, not exactly, or rather celebrates, both of the above, uh, the launch of our Burmese language program here at UC Berkeley five years ago. <laughs> And uh, if you can see Saya Kenneth Wong uh, in the um, picture frames, uh, chat books, whatever, um, you might begin to blush a little during this uh, one hour you have with us because we all want to take this opportunity to thank Saya Kenneth Wong, the Burmese language instructor and much, much more besides, uh, who launched our Burmese language program here on campus five years ago. And since then, has gone from a few students in introductory Burmese, one of whom is now running and has launched a car rental app in Yangon, um, to introductory and intermediate courses, which are broadcast through distance learning, also to UCLA. So big shout out to Sayak and F1. We are so lucky to have with us here in our department, Chao Dai, a PhD candidate from China, who has a very high level of Burmese, having studied it for four years at Beida, Beijing, Dacia, Peking University or Beijing University, where the language program has been running since 1949 for 71 years. So we're all hoping that our Burmese language program uh, can keep running for that long and beyond. And shout out again, a huge vote of thanks for Saya Kenneth Wong for all you've done to promote Burmese language study on campus. Without further ado, I shall now introduce Koko Tet, whose poetry you can find in Granta in his recent poetry collection, The Burden of Being Burmese. And who also contributed to, uh, more than contributed to, was co-editor and lead translator for Boneswell Crow, the first anthology of Burmese poetry in translation in English. And there's so many more things I could say about Koko Tet. One last thing I will say is that Koko Tet and Saya Kenneth Wong and I are collaborating on a volume of Burmese writing the focus is contemporary Burmese writing, which will be published with Manoa at the University of Hawaii, the International Literary Journal. And I'm so pleased to be working with Kenneth and Koko on that. So thank you, Koko, who has taken time out of his day or his evening because Koko Tet is beaming in from Norwich in the United Kingdom. Unmute. Thank you, um, Professor Edwards, for your fine introduction. Now I'll start uh, reading um, two, one, the first of the two of my poems, and let me do the screen share. 
so you can read the Burmese text up here. Can you all see that? Okay. Um, the first one is named Kola in Burmese. So we to Gaji Yecha Shitu Ko, La Yecha La, Kola. Kola, Pet Chong Eti Nga, Numa Piati, Nga Nuringa, Sachong Eti Yue, Lanli. No Dwali Rune, Paluha, Nave. Mema, no digong, the dazin lao shibu, na su donge. Ching dano, the jelinga, jongu tot yige. Jonga, na inji kolagu, kajanyan swe si bi. Alpha, beta, gamma rune, tangaine. Manaka alugin wigu, yasizi ra mami me. Namu kamba mugu, ingli duga, andige. Nga sure kaunga sayali ngali. Kikale chumyaba. Nga kuku sayarome. Nika sisi nire. Neyong neku jyotare. Ole Stevens ka inzi aji. Nga ru chaundar zugaro. Tu za duinga ne samusa kwa tadala surawe pijin nige. Apeha tu amad kuku jau. Amye shani bong yare. Ape ne nga ni yaw ta ma ta re ma ji u. Ape shani ra ma ho. Ape gu mo ji mi rai. Nga atwe khanyaro ra be. Nga ru ba lao tau tau. Palu ma ma mu. I in iconic dadu bira gu nga jai so ti ati balau saya saya nga wama pye mian nama pye kriya ru gu loong wama li la ve sami wera yin gu kong du ne nga pya tang ye chao ma li la ghe da miya gu tatu cha lai do ko la su re le tiens ka ha ko la ri su re Ladins Gaga Lara, Tu Devega, Kola Sue. I will attempt to read in English now. Kolari. I stayed at the breast till six. My wet nurse was sixteen. I was the beast with milk teeth. Me wished mum a dozen teeth. Gap toothed, I fled to school, full tilt. School corrected my collar and set me down with gaji, kagui, and gange. Before I learned to correspond with letters, I was in love. The Almighty indeed sent the potato blight, but the English created the famine. I was always starving. Times were sweet as sweet potatoes. I was in for a treat. The river is moving. The blackbird must be frying. I found Wally Stevens boring. We boys were wondering if there is a samosa inside Angie's panties. Dad always looked embarrassed about things for reasons unbeknownst to me. He wasn't embarrassed about us. Whenever I tried to make eye contact with him, he would well up me. A lot we drank, God we never drank. My favorite was in iconic chemistry. No matter how many mangoes I ate, I never had emotion. Without swatting up on Greek verbs, I flew with flying colors, mile highs, 
over the exams. Mom and dad were mad, proudly happy. Everything school had ever taught me boils down to this. Cholera comes from Latin cholerae, which means cholera. Without honors, I took to the third exit. Um, the next one is uh, called uh, Kafu, which uh, I mean, uh, which I wrote in Burmese. In Burmese, um, the title is Dream. I think I should stop uh, the screen sharing. Amen. Men la le dunga ngaga amen pima. Era jo chime thave mene te te dura. Ngebua ga amen lu uruwara. Men sap yam fo bima. งาหยอกกันไล่เตอะนิยมบ่ลงลีคุติมีจีบอเปียนมะจ่าลาดีดาริยาเดจองนุยเปียวเรสกามิงาโกตินบีเมซูคุเฉิงทีตินบีเดว
these days, I hardly go out anyway. Even now, here I am, just to check the empty streets to see if the poison barbs I planted in the potholes the other night have blossomed. Thank you. Thank you. Myself. Um, all right, uh, that was wonderful. Thank you, Coco Thet. Um, it's such an honor to be here with you all. And I'm grateful to Professor Penny Edwards and Sarah for organizing our event today. And I'd like to begin with the final poem in my collection, Storage Unit for the Spirit House. Spirit House Six. The gnats had moved into the house on Inya Lake, zoomed through halls with pocket knives, tamarind seeds, green bananas. Family offerings of jade bracelets, cheroot cigars, deer tails. The medium danced wildly in the family room, drunk on palm wine, spinning, spinning. Orchestra of circle drums and copper bells played on the staircase, Natque. Eight children on the floorboards, leaping over uncles and cousins, shaking shaking. Mother lit candles on the wall shrine. She spoke to the blue winged insects. They whispered back. A gnat warmed itself by the flame. Auntie walked in a dream state. Hot room. Cousin slowly opened a large trunk of teak and silver strips. The gnats flew inside, one after the other, after the other. Den. In the den, he would say, just keep your big mouth shut. And we did, standing in a line along the wall. I have taught you many things. At the conference, I said I was God. Mother would say, someday you'll meet your older sisters. Pray to Buddha, pour water in this bowl. She worked like a dog, like a dog. She loved him the most. I don't want to leave you without a father. Your aunt's favorite color is blue. She'd sprinkle curry powder on our mac and cheese. I'll stay with him until your sister gets married. Diorama. Where will the deer sleep? I thought about this last night as I always do. Why do we hope? Hope and beauty are obsolete constructs, they concurred. How does a painting speak? Language is the difference among three things. Who enters the spectacle? The brave ones with their silk skirts. The dining room table was set for six one missing spoon. My neighbor captures escaped bees with the butterfly net. Forest burns a violent red. Deer leap from the flames, singed flanks. 
Hold on now to what's left. And here's another Spirit House poem. Spirit House 4. Sibling follows sibling into Thorn Forest. Girl holds stick of incense, tip a glow. 37 gnats await atop Mount Popa. Volcanic relics, sister brother, blue-throated barbets. Lightning clue, nest lands on soft earth, entwined vines. Distant blaze, candle wick floating in bowl of oil. Storage unit for the spirit house. The father at dining room table, shades drawn, wobbly thrown. The daughters with their brown shaky hands. A forest gnat haunts the master closet among the clothes moths, felt wolverines. Daughter number one, hiding behind a juniper bush, bright longies, wooden handgun in metal case. Daughter number two sleeps with a long broom next to her bed, mint chocolates under pillow. 5 a.m., the father drops a cold, wet towel on her face. Storage unit filled with boxes of LPs, Joni, Dylan, Carly. Back cover of Jimi Hendrix experience. On two hits of acid, this will blow your brains out. Dusty military jackets, punishment belt, piles of lock boxes, missing keys. Jars of Nescafe, VHS tapes of Burmese pop singers. Daughter number three listens to father's records in the den, altered music room. Sits on the piano bench near the door, the father in armchair, Joni singing A Case of You. Forest gnat flutters above in air, smoky from Kent 100s. Halls, children not sleeping, cement floors, mylar sheets, small bodies turn, held sorrows collected, panopticon, held in cells, how do they hold? The halls get cold. The children are not sleeping. And this is called Sky Space 3. A limited edition, annotated records for the researchers, referred to footnotes about the survivors, how they lived, how they moved, how they breathed, opened door and let sky inside. Spirit House 2, my next door prison neighbor, we can't see ourselves, garland of posies, slung through iron bars, Nat swinging from old rope. Consensus holding our cups, cocks, crosses. Teardrop tattoo on cheek. Eyelash on pillow. We touch ourselves, ourselves. And this is my second to last poem. Cinema. 
The Auteur Pops Pain Pills, Hybrid, Saga, Biopic, Adrift in the Headroom, Nat Escape, Sirens, Deep Background, Close Up of Beehive in a Cemetery, Fugue State, Reverse Shot, Tomb Fur, Montage of lace handcuffs and cardboard boots, choking ocean. And I'd like to end with the first poem in my book, Spirit House One. The gnats have stolen my hair. Mosquito net winds itself around limbs. Watch clumps of black hair blow across the room on the balcony. The house on Inya Lake presses down on my neck and back. Smell of jackfruit and sweet orange consoles me. Eat semolina cake under crackling palms. Hear the cousin's gossip. She is so idle, not as enterprising as her four sisters. Sometimes I cannot bear to watch these sunsets. Thank you for listening. Um, and now I'd like to share a few words about Saya Wong. I met Kenneth many years ago through our mutual friends, the Worthy Twins, Liz and Sonia who mentioned that they knew a Burmese writer in San Francisco. So of course I had to meet him. Um, over the years, Kenneth and I have done readings together, participated in performances, and have had some delicious lunches at Royal Rangoon in Berkeley. I have visited his Burmese language class and can attest to his warmth, humor, and humility. I'll be ever grateful to him for his translations of my poetry. In fact, Kenneth did the translation of my book's title, and I'm going to show you the page. Um, oops, oh, oh, it's right here. Um, I don't know if you can see this. His translation, um, and um, his translation translation is warehouse for the spirit houses. And we had this conversation back and forth because Kenneth said, um, well, we don't really have storage units um, in Burma, or at least there's not a direct translation. So thank you, Saya Wong, for all that you do. And now I'd like to introduce um, Chow Dai, who is a PhD candidate in the Department of South um, and Southeast Asian Studies at UC Berkeley. Chow kindly wrote this epigraph for my collection, which I will share with you all. Gnats are spirits believed to have the power to influence the everyday life of people in their orbit. The vitality of this belief is embedded in the rituals, including people's worship in daily life, the role of mediums, and the holding of gnat festivals. The list of 37 official gnats that were integrated with Buddhism by King Anurata in the 12th century includes only some of them. Because gnats hold sovereign power in particular geographical locations, small shrines called spirit houses are often placed in a village or even inside or near a worshiper's house where offerings can be made to the local gnat. As the doorkeepers, guardians, and protectors of a home or locale, gnats are powerful entities. Failure to honor them properly through offerings and appropriate behavior can bring illness, injury, or disaster on family or community members. Let's please welcome Chow Dai. Okay. Thank you, Mao, so much for introducing me. So also thanks to um, Kokote and Mao's wonderful poems, um, since all of you just heard all of them. And uh, 
I would like to say it's my honor to be mentioned in Ma's book and um, I'm really happy that my words were incorporated by her into her wonderful new um, poetry collection. So I'm now going to share my screen with everyone. I'm going to read a Burmese, a, a poem that um, both the Burmese version and the English version as well. So this is a poem written by Mao Xing Wing Mao and uh, it is translated by um, Kokote and Tetsu San. And now I'm going to read this Burmese version of this poem. So, Mao Xing Wing, Sa Dao Sai, Duma Adango, Jema Mamide, Eri Adanga, Jema Adanbe, Eri Namego, Jema Matibu, Eri Ganga Mele. Shin Adanga Name the Ku Shire Lo Jamatinde Era Jema Name Le Duma Go Duma Sado Sign the Kuma Tuida Eri Sanga Duma Duane Ja Sign Maho A Yinga Yo Pude Nea the Kube Eri Sign Ma Duma Je U Sa Pude Anna Alugin Hingwedwigo Name Bay Matabu Zabwe Toga Adan Sasane Shinjamago Baloma Mami Dale Maniga Me Lama Jamado Letege Dale Gaymong Dwego Profession Nedwe Boda Gay the Kuga De Flatega Wong the Kune Kassin Sing Sing the Buebo, Bala Chamale. Sing Miu Yu, Name Bello Kale. Golo O Dui, Dima Balo Ne Jadale. Jesu Biu Bi, Lebe Ba, Adwe, Jama. Eri Si Le Dui Dui Ga, Sing Ha Dui La. So now I'm going to read the English version of this poem. Um, I'm going to stop sharing. So, okay, here we go. Mao Xing Wing Restaurant. I recognize her voice because it's my voice. I don't know that name because it's his name. I think your voice has a name, but it's my name. She met herself in a restaurant. It wasn't her restaurant, but it was a place she had been before. She had eaten eggs there, potatoes Anna, the dishes had no names. The waiter had a high voice. How could you not remember me? We were married last May. The cakes were baked by professionals. One of them looked like a marvelous dress. What will you bring to the table? What is your sir name? What are the camels doing here? Please change for me. Are those your wind chimes? So, yeah. After finishing reading these poems, I'm going to also say a few words about um, Saya Kenneth Wong. So I have to say that I got to know Mao because of Seya Wong. She, so when my first semester here in Berkeley, she, he invited me to his um, Burmese class and asked me to do, give a speech about Burmese not worship. And I went there 
and Mao was there. So that's how we got to know each other and how um, I, how my words about those not worship practices were included in her book. So I was really glad that because of Seah Wong, we got in touch with each other and he did a really wonderful job in connecting us to each other. And also he has been such a general and patient teacher whenever I have questions regarding my research project and he's always willing to help me and sharing his skill, his language skill and also his experience with me. And um, so now I'm going to hand it back over to Penny, who is not only a great mentor for me as my advisor in this PhD program, but also she's also a always supportive of our Department of South and Southeast Asian Studies. And also she's been doing a great job for moderating this event for us. So I'm going to now hand it back to her. Thank you so much, Xiao, for those very kind words. And so um, on the program, we put the title of the poem that Chow was going to read as a revelation, and the revelation was that this is a new translation. So it was a surprise for Mo Xin Win and uh, Koko Tet and Tet Susan, who is incidentally the first Burmese to graduate with a Master of Fine Arts, that's an MFA in Literary Translation from the University of East Anglia. Yay. Um, she and Koko Tet co-translated that poem, a revelation indeed. One of the really beautiful lines, there are so many, and I really urge you all um, to buy Moore's book. <laughs> it's just such a work of beauty. One of the lines in one of the poems that she read that might have caught your attention, given that our focus today is on Burmese and language, as well as spirits uh, and gnats, 37 and more, um, is this, this line that a language is the difference among three things and translators are the mediators of language that help resolve that difference and transform it into something more. Um, so I'm going to read now a poem by Koko Tet. I just have to do a little balancing act. One of the great things about supervising graduate students is that eventually they produce <laughs> works like this, and then I can balance my laptop on them because I prefer to stand up while I'm reading this poem, especially as it's called A Walk With History. So um, hopefully the tower won't crash <laughs> as I'm reading, which would be most inauspicious, but thankfully I've got Lokana behind me, which I'll talk about, who I will talk about a little more shortly. So, And before I start reading the poem, I wanted to say a few words about the person to whom Koko Tet dedicates this poem. And that person is Saya U Tano. Saya U Tano um, was Koko Tet's language teacher who taught Koko Tet English. And Koko Tet, when he wrote this poem and wrote the English version, uh, did a shout out and recognition and you know, uh, acknowledgments to Saya Utano, who apparently was also a great friend of the late great language teacher, John O'Kell, who many of you beaming in here from around the world will have been fortunate enough to meet and who also like Saya Kenneth Wong, demonstrated an enormous generosity of spirit, as well as a passion and love for the Burmese language. So. A Walk With History by Koko Tet. How do you write history in a language that has no past tense? I don't ask for it more than once. History stumbles over me. How is it that you are part of history if you haven't fine dined with her? It was the railroad worm in Adam's apple. It was the pine bark turned into rye bread. 
It was the rotten meat ration on the battleship Potemkin. It was a hike in the price of oil. It was a vis of rice for a lot of vice. It was the Iron Chef in Hell's Kitchen at Fu Li restaurant. What's up in your hometown? A turnpike, a flyover is under construction over the juncture of history. When did Cleo land? This morning, about half past two. Did she have anything to declare? Nothing? They strip searched her anyway? What did they find on her? A whistleblower. A conch shell blower. A critically endangered cheroot industry. A pair of cheap putches. The crowd psychologist, Dr. State, with his twin sons, racism and reverse racism. An albino cockroach, a fake hypocrite, and an immigrant whose name you will never get. Thank you, Kokote, for your beautiful poetry. Um, an immigrant whose name you will never get. Of course, that has a double entendre because you might never get the immigrant's name when they move across borders and are oftentimes given a different name, um, a different surname. And the play on words on surname was something in Morshane Wynn's poem, Restaurant, which um, Chow Dai just read the new translation of. Morshane Wynn's beautiful book, A Storage Unit for the Spirit House, is kind of humming with the presence of gnats and also raises so many questions through these seemingly throwaway lines that sparkle light gems throughout the book. Um, like, when will the future arrive? There are questions of time and space and really, really wondrous connections that are made through this very concise language and tone, which you will have sensed also through Moore's reading of the poetry, her own grace of spirit and wisdom. Nats are what brought together, in a way, uh, this event and perhaps drew some of you to enroll and register for this event. And thank you so much for doing so, because of course we are nothing without an audience. <laughs> um, I wanted to thank um, Northern Illinois University who have a Burma, fantastic Burma Study Center and a great Burmese collection for sharing an image that you would have seen on the starting opening slide of the program, which is an image of Lokanat. And I'm going to share with you a hologram and a message from Lokanat. And so the hologram is something that I picked up on a street stall in Yangon. And as we were doing a run through and a rehearsal yesterday for this to make sure we had the timings right, because we know that your time's important, um, we began a conversation, Kokotet and I, about look on that, which resulted in yet another of Kokotet's translations. So first I'm gonna share the image, if you bear with me for a minute. And here you will see an image of look on that. Now look on that, is not one of the 37 gnats. And look on that um, is a gnat who, for want of a better word, I'm sure there are better words and ways of expressing this, uh, specializes, if you like, in mediation and conflict resolution. So we've been talking about translation. This is the look on that and a beautiful gold. Um, gold lacquered, gilded and lacquered, I should say, a wooden statue of the Lokanat uh, is there at the NIU collection. And thank you for Catherine Raymond and for her staff for quickly giving me an image of that gnat. And so I'm going to read uh, the little verse that you will see 
in the corner uh, in translation by Cocotet. He appears always in a dancing pose, beloved all over the world. Peace is his portent, prosperity his will, all kinds of harm he will shield you from. May your metta wishes come true. I thought that was a nice spirit uh, to end the readings on. And I'm sure that if there were an internet, as there is an internet, um, the services of Lokanat could come into great play um, here in the US perhaps in resolving recent um, and perhaps ongoing disputes. So we have finished a little short of time. Um, we wanted to be sure that we had room for all the poems. So um, Mo or Coco, would you like to read another poem and share another of your poems? Or Coco, you had wanted to share, I think, an anecdote about uh, Saya Kenneth Wong also. If I may mute myself, and then perhaps you could unmute yourself, and we could uh, move on to move back to a uh, cocotet in Norwich. Okay, can you hear me? Um, first off, I, I I thought I was going to say a few words about uh, Mo Xing Wen, my Mo Xing Wen, and uh, <laughs> and then I'll I'll say a few words about Kenneth, of course. Um, um, Mam Mo Xing Wen, uh, I think I'd be remiss if I do not mention that, you know, you are, as an Asian American poet of Burmese origin, you have already made your presence felt in Burmese poetry scenes. Uh, we know that because even before your publication of Invisible Gifts, right, uh, one of your poems that appeared in the shampoo, I think, uh, around 2003, that was translated into Burmese by Han Lin, Burmese poet Han Lin. And that was published in Burmese poetry anthology, Kapiya Loka, in 2017, right? So you, you, your name already preceded your poetry collections in Burma. So, so also, that's because of your weird and wonderful style of poetics that resonate very well with the Burmese young generation of uh, Burmese poets who want to look beyond uh, mainstream American poetry. And with the storage unit for the Spirit House, I think you further entrenched your reputation as a preeminent Burmese poet <laughs> who happens to be in the United States. That's what I want to say about you. <laughs> okay. And about Kokenet, of course, I always associate uh, Kokenet with the Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, he took me. Uh, to the Golden Gate Bridge when I was a guest of Professor uh, Edwards, Penny Edwards, at, uh, uh, in, in uh, 2016, uh, 17, uh, that was over the new year. And we were visiting Kokenet and I. So Kokenet was, Kokenet introduced me the Golden Gate in the flesh or in concrete and I don't know, whatever. <laughs> so I am always grateful about uh, that. And today I, I see, you know, the Burmese language program he is teaching very capably as a golden gate of language that must be preserved and protected. Yes. Well, thank you so much, uh, Coco. And Mo, do you have any other poem you would like to read from the collection? Because I was a bit, uh, you know, we, I, we were like, everyone had so much time, but because we allowed extra time, there is more time. If you'd like to share one more poem, I'm sure so many would love to hear it. Okay, <laughs> sure, I'd love to. And I, I just want to thank, um, thank you all for your, this, this has been a, an hour of surprises. So thank you for your wonderful words and, um, and just to also thank Kenneth because Kenneth has been such a connection for so many people. And, um, and let's see, I'll, gosh, I'm being spontaneous. Okay. <laughs> uh, theater in three acts. Where are the minnows? 
song of gongs in mini mall? What happens to the body after soliloquy? Mine in modeled fur coat. When does the future arrive? Birthmark on forehead in shape of flame. That's for you, Penny. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Chow. Thank you, Coco. Thank you, dear Penny. And thanks to everyone who came today. Yes, thank you. It's wonderful. I see we have 65 participants and there's four of us and one of Sarah. So rock on. That's wonderful. Um, I know that Sarah is recording this, so you will be able to find it online later. For anyone who's um, beaming in because you're interested in teaching about NATS uh, in your classroom, I can recommend a couple of other great resources, which I happen to have here. And one is Smile As They Bow, which is a novel by Nunu E, terrific translation. Uh, and Chow Dai, I forgot to mention, is my teaching assistant or graduate student instructor in Southeast Asia 10A. That's our gateway class to Southeast Asian civilizations or to those of mainland Southeast Asia. Um, and we've been teaching uh, this book. Uh, also, Tamara Ho at UC Riverside has some wonderful work and articles on gnats and spirit mediums, as does uh, Benedict Brett de la Perriere. And you know, the list goes on. Um, so this, uh, I just wanted to mention that Sarah will be putting this up later. And finally, I would say also that although this is I think the first Burmese poetry event, I believe um, that the Center of Southeast Asian Studies has hosted, um, the Department of English in their lunchtime poems did host uh, the brilliant poet Zayar Lin in, I think it was 2013. And you can find that poetry and his visit on the lunchtime poems of the English department. And also Zayar Lin was presenting in Burmese and English and it's a wonderful resource. And uh, Saya Kenneth Wong, just to close off where we started, uh, can be found, although was not present uh, in this event. Um, he was very much present in spirit because we kind of wanted to support Prize him <laughs> uh, with this event as marking the fifth year of the Burmese language program in our department and on our campus. But you can find a video of Saya Kenneth Wong reading uh, in Burmese and in English at an event at the Berkeley Art Museum and Pacific Film Art Archive, um, which Mo Shane Win, Bonnie Wiley Kwong, and many of us collaborated with in spring 20. 19, which seems an ice age away <laughs> uh, when we could all do these things live. Um, and if people are interested in getting that link, then please email me. And it's not yet up on a YouTube, but um, it is accessible. So thank you all, especially again, thank you to Sarah for organizing. Sarah. Thank you. Uh, more Kokotet and Chow Dai.